thank you for that uh, kind introduction. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, I think uh, this uh, uh, summit on uh, waste uh, reduction, recircular economy, and enhanced livelihoods is, uh, is a very critical one. It's a critical one because we have already generating over 71 million tons of waste every day. And this is only going to increase. And this is only going to increase because our process of urbanization has just begun. Uh, you know, we are seeing about 30 Indians move from rural areas to urban areas every minute. And if you go by the latest McKinsey study, by 2050, you will have close to 700 million Indians getting into the process of urbanization. And that means that uh, India will be creating two and a half Americas by 2050. And we will do more urbanization, more construction, more urbanization, more people getting into cities in the next 50 years than what we've done in the last 5,000 years. And, uh, you know, cities, while they account for 3% of the earth landmass, they account for about almost 70% of the people living in cities in the world. But they also account for about close to cities account for about 80% of the CO2 emissions. And therefore, you know, the process of urbanization has ended across America, it's ended across Europe, it's nearing its completion in China. But the process in India has just begun. And, you know, when America and Europe urbanized, land, gas, water were all cheaply available. And because they were cheaply available, America had the luxury of living in New Jersey, traveling to New York, guzzle gas, create waste. Uh, you know, they could create cities like Atlanta where 99.8% of the people travel by car. So many of the American cities were actually based on this model of consumption. It was based, these cities were designed for cars and not for people. When our urbanization process has begun, land, gas, water are all scarce commodities, all scarce commodities. Therefore, we'll have to do a very innovative and sustainable model of urbanization. And many of these lessons, to my mind, come from the eastern part of the world and they don't come from the western part of the world. They come from a city called Yokohama, where a lady mayor was able to reduce waste. Reduce waste by household segregation, at household level, by almost 39%. And it made a huge difference to Yokohama. There was a savings of about close to 7, 8 billion US dollars. By just reduction at household level. They come from Singapore, which has demonstrated its great ability to recycle water for human consumption. They come from a city called Kitakyushu in Japan, which became the most polluted city in the world post-World War II, drove this manufacturing of power plants and cement in Kitakyushu. But the women of Kitakyushu rose in revolt. In mid-70s, they rose in revolt because the Dukai Bay on which it is based actually went absolute yellow from blue. It impacted the life of citizens. And therefore, there was no alternative but for the Ministry of Trade and Industry, which is a very powerful ministry in Japan, to work in partnership with the women of Hitakyushu to create a totally recyclable city. It's one of the smartest cities if you go there. Everything is recycled. Everything is recycled. And therefore, to my mind, there are two critical elements. If you are already generating 71 million tons of waste every day, it is only going to increase. And therefore, there are two clear things. One is you need to reduce. You need to reduce and you need to reduce at household level. You need to segregate at household level. And there is a need for mass movement around this. A huge mass movement and the political leadership of municipalities of municipalities and the administrative leadership of municipalities must be held accountable for this. 
and nobody is holding them accountable. I mean, we have workshops, we have seminars, but nobody holds municipalities, which is their basic function to get this reduced at household level, responsible. And unless we don't pin them down, municipalities have got into a range of activities, but they fail to do their basic function. And their basic function is waste management in their cities. And therefore, each one of us need to hold municipalities responsible. There are some unique examples of this. I've been to Indore and Bhopal several times and I've seen the radical transformation that has taken place in these cities. And this has happened because of several things. One is household reduction, segregation, massive fines, education, extension, mass communication, conversion of waste into uh, manure, compost, uh, energy, huge level of work, mechanization, ma massive amount of work has been done around. And actually, the model of Indore needs to be replicated across every single city of India. Every single city of India. We don't need workshops, let me tell you this. I've come to the conclusion that India has done something very successfully in Indore, including reduction at household and shops level and creating a huge mass momentum. And that movement needs to be spread across India. I think so. My belief always has been that reduction and segregation holds the key to the success. And second is that you need to move from a linear economy to a very circular economy. And when you need to move from a circular economy, Firstly, I think, to my mind, you need to prioritize the regenerative resources and ensure that renewable, reusable and non-toxic resources are utilized as materials and energy in a very efficient way. Secondly, we need to ensure that there is preservation and extension of what has already been made. And this would require us to highlight the ways to improve the lifespan of the resources so that it can be used for the farthest time without harming the environment. And thirdly, we need to use waste as a resource to focus on utilization of waste as a source of secondary resources and recovery from waste for subsequent reuse and recycling. And fourthly, I think, we need to all design for the future. So that we select the right materials, design for appropriate lifetime and design for extended future use. And fifthly, I think we need to collaborate across industries to create joint value across sectors. And sixthly, I think we need to all rethink of the business model on how do we create opportunities to create greater value and business models so that we can create product and services which can last. And seventhly, I think we need to track and optimize resource use and strengthen connections between supply chain actors digitally. Everything must be tracked online. And you, if we are not able to create online platforms and technologies that provide tracking, it will be very difficult to find solutions. And technology enables you to do that today. And therefore, the circular economy approach truly has the potential to transform the function of resources in the economy. Waste from factories could become valuable input to another process and products could be repaired, reused or upgraded instead of being disposed. And you know, we are living in a world of very high and volatile resource prices. This model presents a lot of business potential and opportunities. And if we had a material recycling conference recently, and I was amazed at the kind of work Indians have done in this field across the world. The best papers were presented by Indians who've gone to European economies and they've become the most dynamic entrepreneur in the recycling economy. They've actually done the most amazing work. And we can give you, Sujit Sandai sitting here, we'll give you details of Indians who've gone and done some great work recycling in all the European cities. And 
So they have implemented practices that are in line with the goals of the circular economy. They all shared best practices. They shared data on how we can uh, invest in innovation and encourage business to business collaboration. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, to my mind, there are huge economic benefits of establishing a circular economy. There's a famous study, I think must have been quoted by Ellen MacArthur Foundation that by 2025, about a trillion of material cost saving could be generated annually from circular business models. This same foundation finds that opportunities in India up, amount to close to 218, 218 billion dollars in India per year, every year 218 billion dollar worth of economic opportunity by 2030. So that's a massive business opportunity, huge business opportunity. And therefore, this approach offers the possibility and the potential to create business model which, by which India could grow in a very innovative and sustainable manner and that is what is required. It's not possible to pursue the approach which we've been pursuing for the last 70 years. Not possible anymore. 14 of the most polluted cities of India are already here. And you need very tough, very firm action now. And we need to really get into sunrise areas of growth. And quite often we get into sunset areas which again start polluting. So you need to get into sunrise areas of growth. And one of the key areas of growth to my mind is of course, how do you recycle waste? How do you convert waste into energy? How do you move towards renewable energy? How do you transform your mobility? In the next five years, combustion vehicles will be on par with electric vehicles in terms of cost simply because the cost of batteries is falling rapidly and will fall from $275 to $75 an hour. We cannot become an importing country for batteries and then have all the nickel, cobalt and lithium here being dumped. So how do you add value? How do you reach from package to cell manufacturing here? And how do you use the shift towards electric vehicles by charging them with clean fuel? How do you use the strength of your renewable energy? We are importing close to about 150 billion worth of dollars of oil every year. And your biggest strength is sun. The biggest strength India has is sun. So the whole focus needs to be shifted towards renewable energy, towards energy, towards electrification of vehicles, towards charging through batteries and towards battery storage. These are the key areas and these are all sunrise areas of growth. And if we take a march forward in these sunrise areas of growth, we would have pushed for towards sustainable development and we would have pushed towards uh, clear a model where we'll move away from what we've been doing in the last 70 years. And therefore, to my mind, this whole circularity of resources is the key on how do you modularize, how do you remanufacture, how do you do component reuse, how do you design products with less material. And if we are able to do this, then we will be able to transform India. It's not about creating a circular economy. It's not about waste. It's not about, as you've titled it, waste reduction. It's about creating a new India. By doing all this, actually you're transforming your country. You're creating a new India. And therefore, by practicing circular economy, we have the potential to achieve a significant number of sustainable development goal targets. There's huge relationship between circular economy practices and the targets of clean water and sanitation, between that's SDG 6, between SDG 7 about affordable and clean energy, between SDG 8 of decent work and economic growth, 
and SDG 12 of responsible consumption and production, and SDG 15 of life and land. And therefore, in all these areas, if we want to achieve progress and sustainable development goals, this is the only way. And therefore, we need to really push for a circular economy through looking at global examples of policy, of legislation, and of creating frameworks for material recycling. Uh, if a law is required, so be it. If a policy change is required, so be it. If, if we need uh, any kind of best practices, and there are a whole range of them available across EU, across Germany, across China, across USA, and there are a vast number of practices, and we've done an analysis of the best practices in terms of setting up of material recycling zones, uh, the whole range of best practices of shared responsibility of stakeholders, of recycling content mandate, of discouraging the use of landfills, of interstate regulations which limit being relaxed or done away with to ensure that limiting the trade of waste materials from one state to another needs to be relaxed to the ex maximum extent possible so that the, we can create markets for this. Of use-based pricing, where the costs are passed on to consumers for higher prices of products, of uh, voluntary agreements with NGOs, and a whole lot of relaxation of existing norms so that uh, we are able to work with voluntary agencies. I gave you the demand side management, but on the supply side, you need public participation. We need the role of local bodies. We need the municipality should have the option of selling the scraps to the industry after segregation. And we need a policy framework where we should ensure mandatory corporate participation and industry participation with scrap recycling as an integral component of the CSR curriculum. So ladies and gentlemen, we in Niti Aayog will be very happy to work with you to provide best practice information to ensure that we give you government support for all uh, best practices to disseminate information and to partner you in this effort. To my mind, this is the biggest challenge India has. The biggest challenges of consumption, the biggest challenges of urbanization, the biggest challenge of our cities becoming the most polluting cities and ruining the lives of all the citizens. We are not able to breathe fresh air. We are not able to live in our cities. So this is not about waste. This is about survival of human beings. This is about our next generation, our children being able to live a better life in India. And if we are not able to do this act of cleaning up, and if we keep creating waste, then when imagine what will be the condition if you already have 14 of the 15 polluted, most polluted cities, what will happen if another 700 million Indians get in to the cities by 2050? will be nothing but a pile load of waste. And therefore, there are only two ways possible. Either we reduce waste and make the account municipalities accountable for their work. And replicate what... And I'm a great believer in India that if a good work has been done by one place, it can be replicated. Of replicating what Indore and Bhopal have done, create a mass movement around that. And every workshop of this nature must get the indoor people to make a presentation on how they actually cracked it. And secondly is rapidly to get into the circular economy because that is the only way we in Indians can survive. There is no other option. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a great opportunity for us. And this is an opportunity that if we want to take a massive leap forward, we have to think completely differently as consumers, as producers, as policy makers, as corporate houses, as designers. And we need to really keep in mind what you're propagating in this conference, that less is more. Nothing else, just less is more. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.